one thing which I don't understand with this whole case is why do we have smoke for Young Miami and we don't have the same smoke for Cassie? If you check out any interview with Cassie from the years between 2015 and 17, you will stumble across comments like this. Looking at all these interviews is heartbreaking considering what she was going through, wrote one user under an interview Cassie gave for Hot 97 in 2017. In it, she was asked about her relationship with Puffy and why they aren't married yet. It's cool about Puff is that he is and he does want to understand marriage, but we have, you know, a certain type of relationship and it just works the way it is. And when she was asked about whether she's happy or not. So life, life is good? Life is great. Life is great. Yes. Her reaction made it obvious she was lying. Her appearance was also discussed online. Some believed she was pregnant, while others were claimed she had put on some weight and so on. In any case, not long after, it became apparent that her appearance was a result of her toxic relationship with Puff Daddy. She sued him for $30 million, alleging that he committed a sundry of crimes, including sex trafficking and physical abuse. When it comes to Cassie, I mean, both of them were Diddy's girlfriends. They experienced the same thing, apparently. Diddy forced them to do things that they weren't comfortable with, right? These are two women which were coerced into committing crimes with Diddy. When we having the debate that, hey, Young Miami is a victim in this, I mean, she's a woman, she did not really know what she was doing. I want all the girls to look at Young Miami and use her as a prime example of what happens when you allow men to ruin your life, your career, and your image. A lot of y'all do not believe us when we say men can ruin your life. Men can literally ruin your image forever and also take away your opportunities. A lot of y'all do not take that seriously at all. And Young Miami is a prime example of what happens when you allow these men to come in and you center them and then it backfires. Because when that man goes down, trust and believe the woman beside him also goes down as well. This is what happens when you center men. This is why we preach decenter men. This is why we preach stop relying on these men for your income and everything else. Uh, the viewer question for this video is going to be, should we hold women accountable or uh, is, well, 19, 20, not really an age which they can consent because if she did this around 19, 20, then of course we should maybe move up the age of consent when it comes to women because we're shifting the goalposts every single day and it's very confusing. So leave it in the comment section. Tell me what you guys think. But we think your new nickname is going to be Carisha Maxwell. Okay, I don't even know your last name, but we're going to put Maxwell on it because you're the new Ghislaine Maxwell, okay? You're the chick that is the help to the Diddy Jeffrey Epstein operation. You thought you was all special, popping all that. All right, come on, girl. What you're going to have to answer for is that you have been seemingly co-signing all the things that many different people, and we ain't told my little Rod, he's a liar. Many people have said about Diddy, okay? I'm the one which started this story. I was the first one to talk about P. Diddy. If you look back on my channel, you see videos of me just talking about like his sus behavior and some of the videos which I've seen with P. Diddy. So many years I've been saying like P. Diddy is a weirdo. Boy, um, they're having the times of their lives like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose. Listen old that's creepy bro that's a bit weird it's not like for for men it's not as weird as it would have been if he had a f girl there then bro then they'll cook him directly then it's like okay because he could be teaching him something but in it's also the music industry so maybe they're doing music So it's a bit cringe. It's a bit cringe. It's a bit cringe. But um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Oh my! Um, you know, I, it's not. It's wasn't my dream. When I was 15, I wasn't thinking like, oh my god, I want to hang out with Diddy. 
you know, maybe maybe Bow Wow because we're almost not here. Okay, Bow Wow's way older than me, but Bow Wow, I used to see him when I was like 15. He was super big, making music. He was with Cassie, and I was like, God, man, I, I wish I was Bow Wow. But if we're just saying like, if Diddy were to call me when I was like, what? 15 and it's like hey you want to hang out i'll be like eh, i don't know if i want to hang i like i have nothing in common with you we don't i don't i don't look up to you like like the, what what are we gonna what are we gonna do and even the music is not even connected like that but who knows man maybe he's trying to make a buck i have, I have been given custody of him you know he signed the usher uh, I, I had legal guardianship of usher when when you know he, he did his first album, I did his yes. first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next forty eight hours, he's with me. So, um, and, and, and we gonna go full. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he please? But then again, we can't just throw a man under the bus. We have to go through due process. He has to have his day in court before we tarnish his legacy, before we start calling him P words and all the words in the dictionary. So I just have to put that disclaimer out there because honestly, when I'm starting to watch people like Pierce Morgan talk about this, I'm like, okay, I get that hip hop is the biggest music genre in the world, but guys, I think, I think people are doing too much when it comes to the P. Diddy situation because honestly, think of this, Cassie was together with this guy for, I don't know, 14 years, maybe 13, and she was at these freakouts and doing all of that, but when she got out of the relationship, all of a sudden she decided, you know what, I was taken advantage of. But I don't believe that she's just 100% innocent either. And so a lot of times we use the sensationalism of what people are saying in order to justify their behavior. But I guess the question that we really need to ask ourselves is, is 19 an adult, right? Because a lot of people like to lean on the idea that you can do what you want to do when you want to do it when it's convenient for you. But then at the same time, you don't have to be responsible <clears throat> when you start to have a conversation about the decisions that you made and other people's participation in it. I do believe the whole Cassie lawsuit really got him scared, shook and nervous, panicking, shickety shockety shook, as I like to say, you know? Um, so shout out to Cassie for, you know, finally coming out to tell her story. And again, I know a lot of people are like, why did she settle for 30 million? Let's be very clear. Cassie probably isn't going to see 30 million. Her career was pretty much owned by P Diddy himself. She has a musical career that people aren't really checking for. And yeah, so she's probably just like, you know what, I'm going to be unproblematic, take the money. And at least I have a statement out there and the world knows what's tea. And with that happening a couple of months ago, a lot more victims came forward to share their personal stories about P. Diddy and the monster that he is. It's pretty weird. 13 years, you had no problem with it. But at the end of the relationship, that's when you feel like you're, you're somebody took advantage of you. We have to take what Cassie says with a huge grain of salt because we've seen so many cases like this. I was just sitting there on this, on, on this, carpet looking at the dirty carpet wondering how i wound up on this carpet and why i was never why i never noticed that the carpet was so filthy before and i just didn't know what else to do i didn't know what to say i didn't know how to react i just sat there thinking how much time do i have to i figure out what i need to do then again i don't know what he's charged with i don't know why people are like super crazy about this because these are just allegations we do not know anything about what happened thing weird part which i think about the whole p diddy situation is even the fact that right now as we're speaking about it he's not arrested so i'm just putting that out there that let's see and let's wait before we start throwing this man under the bus but then again i see so many youtube channels just going at p diddy and i feel like bro I hope that when something happens to you guys that people have the same courtesy to maybe to maybe listen to both sides. It's not it's not always bad to listen to both sides then make up your mind. So without further ado guys, let's get straight into today's video. He's rap royalty. What's up, New York? 
and the king of a seemingly bulletproof billion dollar what? empire. P. Diddy's homes were raided by federal agents as part of the trafficking probe. Here's what we know. On Monday, officials raided two of rapper Sean Combs, aka P. Diddy Holmes, one in LA and one in Miami as part of a federal trafficking investigation. Video footage shows Combs' sons, Justin and King, handcuffed and detained outside the Holmby Hills house. Photos from Monday's raids showed scores of heavily armed and armored officers, while the streets surrounded the homes were closed and helicopters gathered overhead. Rapper Sean Combs has faced a string of varying accusations in the past six months. However, it is unclear if the investigation is related to any of those accusers. The rapper's lawyers called it an ambush mm. and a gross use of military level force. I'm gonna still be on top. Yeah. Diddy says he'll fight to prove his innocence. But many are speculating that he's the thin end of a big wedge, even foreshadowing a Me Too moment for rap. Mm. Was he a misogynist? In a way, he's selfish. He's a very selfish individual. He wants the spotlight on him. It's very much a shock. It's something that I, I have a heart. Yeah, but just because somebody's selfish doesn't mean that they should, we should tarnish their reputation. Did he always surround himself uh, with young people uh, that basically go out and do whatever uh, he asked them to do. Abusive relationships go both ways, but of course, when you're a man, you're always seen as the villain, even if a woman attacks you first. Fair point. They did not need to come in guns blazing. Remember, even mm. though he may be a billionaire, he also deserves a presumption of innocence. Well, join me now to discuss all this, the DJ and digital media mogul, DJ Vlad, and Mark Curry, the former Bad Boy Records artist who walked, worked closely with Sean Diddy uh, Coombs. So welcome to both of you. Uh, DJ Vlad, welcome uh, a lot to of people of have, have wondered for a while, since the Me Too <coughs> uh, scandal first erupted with Harvey Weinstein and enveloped various industries, why rap and hip hop uh, pretty well emerged unscathed. Do you think that what's going on now with, with Diddy is indicative of a sea change moment for rap and hip hop? Hmm. Well, I don't think hip hop has gone unscathed. I mean, R. Kelly is essentially hip hop. I mean, although he sings, but cool. he is overlapping with hip hop. So this has been happening in hip hop for a while. Uh, you're seeing it happening, happening with Russell Simmons. Uh, so yeah, hip hop has not been free and clear of this, uh, something that everyone's had to deal with. What do you make of what's happening with Diddy? I mean, it's hard to say. He hasn't been charged with anything. I mean, it looks bad. I mean, social media is having a field day. They're calling him the diddler. And uh, they're saying no Diddy whenever they say something questionable. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's not really up to social media or the public. It's really up to the authorities. And unlike an R. Kelly, Puffy has hundreds of millions of dollars and he's going to be able to get the absolute best defense. I'm just saying, though, all them damn friends he used to have all these years, these athletes, these entertainers, entrepreneurs, putting their glasses up with them, toasting, listening to his speeches. They probably, they, they probably knew, bro. And what you're doing right now and uh, giving everybody a light, man, this is an unbelievable thing, man. Like we all, hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, yeah that's what's up. Yeah. 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 Yes, hey, 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 yo, check this out. The family's there. My family's here. Does, does anybody in the family got a record request? We're going to hit a two-step. The Cones family and the James family <laughs> dancing listen, together. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Yo, genre, what you done did, yo, plethora of music, any bad boy record that you ever did, we going to vibe to. They probably knew. But now that the shit done hit the fan, ain't nobody trying to say nothing for that nigga get me, bro. Damn, but if you're a friend, you're a friend, G. Yeah, thanks. A friend, you're a friend. Until it's still an allegation. Until, until the facts come out. Yeah, but a friend is a friend. And, you know, ultimately we'll see what happens in the courtroom. Mark Curry, you worked at Bad Great Boy answer. Records. You know Diddy well, uh, worked with mm -hmm. him, for him. Are you surprised by the revelations and by the FBI involvement? Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it, it took me by shock because... Um, it's, it's almost like karma. It's almost like what, what, what he's been doing, a lot of people accuse him of putting them through in life is actually he, it's his time. Yes, 100% Diddy has done a lot of bad, but 
let's not overshadow all the good he has done. Do you know how many careers, how many people he has discovered? Do you know what Diddy has done for hip hop? And this is the thing which I'm saying like, I get it, yes, it's throw Diddy under the bus month because we gotta sacrifice somebody. We get that, but brother, the hits, the careers, the impact. I would understand if they say, okay, withdraw the money which you have sent to all these schools and all of these youth programs and bruh, you have to look at the good as well. You have to look at the good. And I think Andrew Schultz said this in a previous video about the whole Diddy situation is that we applaud people for being very cutthroat, ambitious, and all of that, right? Those are psychopathic traits. But then again, if we figure out that these people are psychopaths, then we're like, oh my God, he's a psychopath. Yeah, but he already showed you what he was in the beginning. Did he do it or did he not? Yeah, we have to talk about Diddy, as there's loads of video right now all over social media of his LA mansion being raided by the police because due to the recent allegations and lawsuit uh, leveled against him by a producer on his latest record, Diddy is now being investigated trafficking. Now, for any additional info or evidence on this, uh, it seems we're going to have to wait for authorities to go through whatever they find in his mansion because they are sure as hell not going to hear it from Diddy himself at the moment because he uh, is nowhere to be found. Diddy allegedly held freak out parties with underage girls and workers and had hidden cameras in every room of his house. Producer Lil Rod claims in a bombshell lawsuit he was drugged and woke up naked in bed with Diddy and two workers and claims to have hours of video evidence documenting Diddy's serious illegal activity. Rod also alleged that Diddy possessed compromising footage of every person that attended, including Hollywood's biggest names and even royalty. He says the freak out parties were career opportunities for young upcoming artists and Diddy had music execs financially backing them. To the people that are defending Diddy and saying, oh, this isn't fair, you shouldn't take a black man down. Shut up. Maybe he shouldn't have been doing all that stuff and then he wouldn't be in trouble. This is not a race issue. This is an accountability issue. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Oh, Ava Combs. What's your other oh. last name? Ava Baroni. Ava Baroni Combs? Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. We, but you still have beautiful parents that but you're my child also, but please, please tell the story. So, I was <laughs> on the streets, <laughs> and then Papa Combs decided to, that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up and said to come inside and play with his kids. Yeah. 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 Do like Madonna adopted kids and everybody else adopted kids, Charlize Theron, everybody that's ever adopted Sandra Bullock. I adopted you because I felt that you could, you know, um, enjoy also having a black parent to take care of you and help you out. So um, um, just clarify, because it's, it's crazy out here online. So, so <laughs> I, I, I played with the kids, and I got permission from your mother. And to say all of that, to just make it, because it's crazy out here. Um, well, I met Jesse and Dwyla when I was six months old. Six months. Yeah. And six then months. we basically are sisters, all <laughs> four sisters. of us. So. Six and months is crazy. I always come over. Yes. And, and it's Ava <laughs> Brioni Combs. Come on. Let's go. Okay, first when I watched the clip, I was very grossed out and I thought it was very weird that P. Diddy was acting like that in front of the girl and kissing her and doing that. But context, this girl's best friends with Diddy's daughters. So he's saying that, you know, this is my daughter, I've adopted her. It's somewhat of a joke. I don't think that we should take this like super literal that he actually adopted her.
I guess you wonder what's going to happen next, Diddy. And then. So during those tribulations, what we had to learn was to just stay and fight and just do what you got to do. And so if he has the fight in him, like Velaz says, mm. then, you know, we're going to say that he's guilty until he's proven guilt. I mean, he's innocent until proven guilty. And we let the justice. Yeah. And that's the crazy thing about social media. You are guilty unless you prove yourself innocent. System do what they have to do because it's people that's in place that they get paid to actually investigate these mm. things so um it's a it was a shock but it's a very it's very much a shock it's something that i i have a hard time believing in what was he like to be around when you were working with him you know it's, it's his way or the highway mm. you know, very controlling and it's um he's a strong-headed person mm. um you know, it's cool working with him, but it's 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 doesn't create it doesn't create, you know, like working with him and being famous with him and not having everything to go to, to along with the show is just the thing. So um he's But that's wild. That he got the key to the city and now just some few months later, my God. He's selfish. He's a very selfish individual. He wants the spotlight on him. He wants to be a rapper. So really, he's a rapper and not a business. He want, he, he, Bad Boy is a business. It's a label. <clears throat> so he's a rapper on the label. So he's not just a label. He's a rapper. So it's, it's, Russell Simmons is not a rapper. Or you don't... Um, um, so, you know, it's just one of those kind of situations there, you know. Was he, from your experience, was he a misogynist? He, in a way. And before we do, let me ask you this. Can we break that word down right fast one mm. time? So I want everybody to understand what that word is. You ask a question. A misogyn? What is it? Misogynist, yeah. Okay, explain that word for me, please. Well, misogyny is where a man would uh, be instinctively, inherently hateful towards a woman because she's a woman. Uh, and a lot of people feel a lot of uh, lyrics in rap music and rappers over the years have been brazenly mm. misogynist because actually a lot of their fan base like them to be. Uh, w w yes. You, you know, when you can say something like that, um, when you think about being famous and then you think about a female, sometimes a female can get the same energy that you get from being famous just by having her, her sexual organs. So... Yes, you, you have men that come in competition with women over their souls. So, yes, getting into a woman's soul is definitely an accomplishment for a lot of people to say, hey, the females like me, I'm famous and I'm handsome, whatever. And then you get to enjoy those things with females. So, yes, it's just something that comes with being a male, I think, and pursuing females. But I guess my point about uh, Diddy was, from your experience, did he treat women with respect or with disrespect? No one gets really the respect. It's hard to get respect from someone who is on that level of such as the level that he's on. Um, it's to get yeah, but that's also the thing. Like, if you just look at the act when you're sleeping with a girl, there's nothing respectful about it. There's nothing. There's nothing respectful about pounding her. So I, I don't get the argument where people are like, oh, you have to be respectful. Yes, you, in a way you have to be respectful, but women like it when you're disrespectful. That's what they like. They, they are attracted to you being a misogynist. So that's like me saying like, I would like my women masculine. Like what? That's, that's it's almost like me being homosexual because I'm, I'm attracted to that masculinity. That's part of being a straight male is that you want the femininity. Cat Williams predicted exactly what was gonna happen to P. Diddy in this interview with Shannon Sharp. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TGJ, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way, know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. Because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information 
knowledge and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing. You will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. Respect is something that they call you have to earn the respect. Mm. So you, in order to get that respect, you have to stand down on it, and you have to earn that respect. He doesn't give respect, not to females, not to a lot of men, not to producers, um, friends. Um, you can just tell by the way that everyone that's around him and what's going on in their lives. You have all of the artists that's been in prison, a lot of artists that are dead. So it's like, what if, what has he done to help those people's families? And then when you look at that, that's what I would call respect. DJ Vlad, DJ Vlad, I just wanted to talk about the sort of bigger <clears throat> picture here. You know, Sean Coombs is one of the most successful music artists, business people uh, in the music business we've ever seen. I mean, he's, he's a billionaire uh, from a variety of different strands uh, coming off his music. And we, we live in an era where because of social media, it, it's very hard when you get into the eye of a storm like this, it's very hard for him, a man we've just heard uh, so compellingly from Mark Curry there, likes to be in control. Uh, you, you suddenly feel like you're losing control and it's quite hard to control any narrative and it's quite hard to keep that narrative fair. You know, we all want to believe in innocent till proven guilty, but it's almost impossible, isn't it, with social media? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, you're going to get judged one way or another. But then again, uh, there's always just the news cycle of it all. If you look at last year, Kanye was getting canceled by everybody. Uh, he had lost a billion dollar deal with Adidas, uh, every major corporation from Universal to even the, the hardware company. But that, the, the whole Kanye situation, I don't think that that's fair to bring that in because we're talking about allegedly a person which has done trafficking, sex trafficking, compared to a, a person which said he was going to go DEFCON, DEFCON on Jewish people. And DEFCON is like defensive. He's going to defend himself against Jewish people. So th those are two, two totally different things. Uh, but I get Vlad, Vlad is a Jew himself. So I get he's, he's trying to throw Kanye in there just to throw Kanye under the bus, just, just to make, like compare the exact same thing. Like, oh, we, we cancel Kanye for this as well. But then again, Kanye wasn't really canceled. Kanye was just disliked. That's not what happened. I was working with to release his music, dropped him. Uh, and now look, he has a number one song in the country, right? I mean, that's just undeniable. The number one song in the country is Kanye West mm -hmm. featuring Ty Dolla Sign, Carnival. So, and that was put out independently. So it just kind of shows that people have a short memory. And if you put out something that people enjoy, they'll forget and forgive mm -hmm. and just enjoy whatever art mm -hmm. that you have. That's where I'm going to end this video. Um, if you have a hit record, that solves every single problem. L literally, if people like your music enough, they'll, they'll put up with all the bullshit because there's something with music which is it's almost like spell casting. It's casting a spell on people and every single time you play that song, the cycle repeats, it repeats. So it's not fair for him to do that, but I get it, I, get it. I understand why he's trying to do that. Uh, but I have to be fair to DJ Vlad. I dislike him. I hate the fact that he is in hip hop and uh, doing all of that. But in this interview, I do have respect for DJ Vlad. I do have respect that he came with his opinion and he was very based. He wasn't attacking P Diddy and even his friend there, uh, also very based, wasn't really attacking P Diddy because we're, we're too quick to pull the trigger nowadays um, when it comes to this P. Diddy situation. I, I just say, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what happens because I do think that Cassie over-exaggerated a lot. And I do think that when you are hanging out with a person like P. Diddy, which is so powerful and he has all the influence in the world and he literally can take you from zero to 100 or even 1 billion, like just like that 
with a, with a snap of his fingertips, he can do that. You're also going to have people which do not like that. 